So in a moment, I want us to talk about the steps involved in actually doing the virtual wholesaling business. But you know, whether you're wholesaling, staying in the deal, rehabbing, whatever you're doing, regardless of the business model that you've got, you got to find the deals, right? Somebody's, somebody's got to find the deals. And in this market, I mean, I've been full time since 2003. So you got nine more years on me, but since 2003 until today, I don't recall it being as challenging as it is today to actually find the deals because of low inventory. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about your market, but I assume you're facing some of the same challenges on low inventory, right? Oh yeah. That's the supply and demand is definitely affecting things. But you know, what's interesting, Jake too, though, is that we are very aggressive on the marketing side. So we are constantly pulling those leads out of, you know, all the different markets we work within. We're just, we're heavily, um, you know, hitting the marketing component over and over and over again. So that's one thing we're really good at. And also we're very good on the follow-up. So my, my acquisitions team is constantly working at, we have a marketing side of the business too. So. Right. What is your, what, what's working the best for you and your team these days on finding um, sellers? Well, you, you know, Jay, and I, I want to make sure all the listeners understand this too, that you've got to test, you know, each market's a little bit different on things, but for the last 20 years, the best producer for us has been direct mail. Interesting. So uh, what type of list do you like to direct mail to? You know, we use very simple lists. We do absentee homeowners. Okay. And so here kind of the way, and here's why I like to look at the marketing, Jay, and this has worked really well for us. And I teach this to a lot of my students this way too, is a lot of people like to really complicate this. And I'm, I'm like, don't put a ton of filters on things. Keep it very basic. We do the absentee homeowners and then that's our big bulk list. So we're hitting that every single week. Actually, we do two mail drops per week. So it's constantly boom, boom, boom over and over again. And that, so that becomes our foundational piece of marketing. So everybody has to have like their foundational piece. And then we layer on top of that. So on top of that, we'll do cold calling. And then we also do uh, additional, like very specialty lists you know, probates, inherited type lists, uh, delinquent taxes. And we do those more with letters uh, going out and the rest is all postcards. And that creates a pretty consistent flow. We're, we're averaging probably right around a hundred leads or more a week. Wow. That's a lot of leads. Fantastic. So um, any secret sauce to share on, um, on, on the look of your postcard or what the postcard says or, you know, how you get such good response to it? You know, I, I think a big thing on that, Jay, is just, I mean, keep it very simple and work off a of principle. When it comes to marketing like this, you have what we call controllers and you don't want to go in and change something completely. Like so many people go and they say, well, this part postcard doesn't work. So I'm changing everything. Well, sometimes it's, just, you know, it might be just maybe changing the color a little bit, not changing the whole message, just something that gets more attention. So we rotate about four or five different cards through the cycle. So, so one, don't get to the point where you become too complacent. Three, you know, anywhere from three to five different cards, do a rotation around on things and then um, use, you know, try to do something different that really sticks out. One of our best performing cards is in, a lot of people wouldn't, believe this is a, it's actually a black postcard with white letters and it sticks uh -huh. out the rest. Yeah. I got you. So you mail to the same list, you say three to five times. Is that like one drop per month to that list? So what we actually, here's, um, we do something kind of unique on this Jay is we do, um, a rotation around what we call like a, a zone, uh, different zones. So picture this, and this is great for anybody that's really just getting geared, geared up on this. We basically go into any market, 
And if this is just you doing this and it's in your backyard, that's fine. You basically create that to be your farm area. And then we break that farm area up into zones. And then what we learned is we do a rotation of our mail around those zones. What I found is that a lot of people, especially people that are on limited budgets on marketing, what they want to do is a lot of times the, uh, a lot of the gurus will tell them, mail the same list over and over and over and over again. Well, how do you know that list is even a performing list? And they right. can burn all the marketing budget. So what we do is we do a rotation around, and then that rotation method works really well because then we can see some traction, Jay, of which zone is performing, and then that becomes whatever which one's performing the best, then we hit a second round on that one. And then it kind of goes the same way. We're just working it like a clock like that. And it, it works very well. We've been doing that for over 20 years. And we have consistently stayed close to one and a half to 2% response rate. Gotcha. So when you are direct mailing, um, you know, to a, to a market, how many would you say you need to be able to have in that market to mail to for the numbers to work? You know, I, I think that you're looking at, if you can get up somewhere of a list of around, even on the small market, 15 to 20,000, mm -hmm. that's, you. you know, you, know it, it, you can pull some deals out of that. I got you. Very good.